You're my dirty little secret. I gotta let you know. Oh, I'd be a lot dirtier. I've been listening to you since I was four years old. You're like a third parent to me. Oh man, do I respect you? Oh god. I got a, a really good lesson in how to respect men, and just guys are generally the best people on the face of the planet. Screw these women that want to take away what we have, you know? Screw them, Tom. That's right. Screw them. For God's sake, screw them. Personally, now that I'm 25 and, you know, I wouldn't even consider wanting to have children until I've got my life sorted out. You know what I mean? Like, I think children need to be earned. It's like it's like hot woman in Vegas. You, you've got to <laughs> earn the right. I feel very passionately about this Sarah Jessica Parker thing. She's the most scary-looking woman I've ever seen. Put a black hat on her. She's the Wicked Witch of the West. She's got a nose that could sink the Titanic. My God, how can they portray her as anything even remotely attractive? It drives me crazy. Dude, there's like, all right, where I live, there's a Starbucks inside in Albertsons, and then right like 10 steps away from it, there's another Starbucks. I swear. Yeah. Actually, I think I, in my neighborhood, there's a Starbucks, and then inside the Starbucks, there's another Starbucks. No way. Yeah, you go inside the Starbucks, and then, then there's another door, and you go in, and it's another Starbucks. That's nuts. And then near my school... No, but, no, but it gets stuff. better, dude. Okay, here's what happens. I, I was going to the bathroom, and I go in there, and they had a barista in the men's room. Really? Of oh, one yeah. Time. I totally agree with you. Please continue to do your work. Thank Very you. positive for the men out there. Please, men, listen. Listen. Tie yourselves up. Go put a condom on. Pay attention. Women are sick. My wife had cheated on me while I was in Iraq. So I called in November, told you about the story. And December 18th, the day before my brother's birthday, I got a divorce. All right. And, and, and the topper of all this is now I'm banging her best friend. And her best friend is now turned on her. I got to talk to all my brothers out there real quick. You need to listen to our teacher, our father, our brother. Do not live with ladies. You might be able to have a girlfriend now and again. You shouldn't do that either. You don't live with them. It can only go wrong. You're a fake and a phony. I don't Prove believe it. half of what you said. Really? Like this zombies calling in. Half of what you're saying that you do, you don't do that. You're a liar. I know you're a liar. How do you know? You know I'm a liar. American men. You know I'm a liar? You, you know that's October. actionable. I, I have a good attorney. You said you know I'm a liar. I want the proof. I want the proof right now. I you want it. Where's the proof? You talk to women the way you talk to them outside of that show. It's a game to you. Oh, you think so, do you? Yeah, you do kind of want to be objectified a little bit. You would love some guy to say, hey, nice ass. <laughs> yeah, probably. I would pretend like I didn't, but yeah, I would like it. I wanted to know what your idea of the perfect woman was. That would be a woman who turns into a six-pack and a sandwich after I have her. That's all? <laughs> okay. From somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are. Together again on the radio on this Friday. And uh, I should tell you, I've had the crud all week. That same crud you've been hearing about or that you may have gotten in your office or that other people have gotten in your office. I have had it this week. 
In case you didn't get, in case you did not guess, one of the shows this week was a rerun because I was sick. And you know me, I'm the uh, Lou Gehrig, I am the Iron Man, I am the Cal Ripken Jr. of broadcasting. So it takes a crowbar to get me out of here. But uh, one day I just absolutely felt like crap. I hear Dean is already three energy drinks in today, down the hall. And uh, I just want to tell you that, uh, you know, I took one day and I came back. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't sound up to speed. <laughs> Gary's gone to tell Dean to shut up. Um, I, I don't sound up to speed. I don't uh, necessarily feel as good as I'd like to feel, but God damn it, there's going to be a goddamn show. And you want to know something? I have felt like crap all week. And I think we've had killer shows this week. So there. What do you care how I feel? That's not your problem. What have I done for you lately? That's all you care about. And you know what? I understand the feeling. Because what have you done for me lately? Jesus. Anyway. Uh, a question a number of you have asked, are asking. And I'm going to answer it for you. Many of you have written in about Flash Friday. And you've said, hey, it's daylight savings time again. What about Flash Friday? And I want to let you know that uh, the government's finally gone far enough. Daylight savings time was moved back earlier in the year again. To the point where uh, at the end of the show, uh, in many parts of the country, it's still dark when this show is on. So we have made an executive decision. Flash Friday is a summertime event, and it will begin right after Memorial Day. And it will continue through Labor Day. It will be a summer event. And I want to tell you something. This summer, I'm taking no time off. So Flash Friday will be for the summer only. Usually in the summertime, I take as many as four weeks off. This year, nothing before Labor Day. I've done no summer vacation before Labor Day this year. So we will be able to do Flash Friday all summer live, and that's what we're going to do. So stop writing about it. Stop asking about it. It's coming. There will be Flash Friday, but it is coming after Memorial Day. You got it? Good. Last Friday begins the first Friday in June. That's it. So we answered that question. Talked about the illness here. <laughs> and, of course, on Friday on the Tom Lyka Show, it's wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Some of the things we talked about on the air this week. As many as 70% of people say they, they stay in the marriage after infidelity. Why would you do that? We talked about that. We talked about Sarah Jessica Parker having her feelings hurt because a Maxim poll said she's the unsexiest woman alive. By the way, I saw some fat and fugly, like, 12-year-old girls on the Internet, literally, doing YouTube videos. I swear I saw this. YouTube videos defending Sarah Jessica Parker. And these girls are the fat and fuglies of the future. FFF for short. The fat and fugly fives of the future. As this one was uh, bragging about, she wasn't wearing any makeup because she wanted to make a point. Yikes. Uh, we talked about uh, one of the many reasons uh, that people give for getting married, apparently uh, also no longer valid like so many others. The idea that you get married, you'll have someone to take care of you in your old age, and now increasingly women in their 50s, 60s, and 70s are divorcing their husbands. Because they're done nurturing, they're fed up, because their hormones are going wild or whatever. So getting married does not guarantee you children taking care of you or your wife taking care of you. None of that guaranteed anymore, not even close. So a, a good idea to just uh, not get married. We talked about that. 
We talked about the man in Buffalo, New York. Remember that story? The man in Buffalo, New York, who allegedly beat a pregnant woman to, the quote was, to make her lose that baby. And I said that uh, women who come to a man and say, you're going to be a father no matter what. You're going to live up to your responsibility. Well, you have the right to just say that, dear, but uh, you might be running the risk of serious injury or even death. Right? And uh, we talked about an op-ed piece in a college newspaper in St. Cloud, Minnesota, about Hooters, specifically about uh, uh, whether uh, whether Hooters is engaging in objectification of women and uh, whether that's okay or not okay. These are just some of the things we did on the program this week. You might have a comment about any of those. You might want to talk about anything we left out of the mix. There was no politics this week. None at all. I think a lot of the Obama and Hillary Clinton stuff is just getting to be plain stupid. But uh, you can talk about anything we didn't talk about this week. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, DJ Davilio will take out the baseball bat and give it a good hard swing for the new season. So now it's your job if you want to get in the middle of all this. Now's the time. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I think you are the foulest piece of excuse of a human being. Good, I'm glad you feel that way. Telling our youth, our young people of America, that they should be treating women like jurors. Yes. And, uh, they should. I feel very sorry for you. It's the Tom Like It Show. <laughs> The Tom Likas Show. The 1 800 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio at you and me with wide open telephones at 1 800 800 Tom. Now, Brandon, before we get to the latest on you, remind everybody about our first conversation. Tell them what we talked about. Definitely, definitely. But before that, Tom, I want to say sorry that I uh, started to hear you were feeling bad this week, but I got some good medicine that will cheer you right up. Love it. All right. A few months, uh, maybe about a year ago, I called you, and I was uh, discussing that I was a little bit a little bit uh, uh, taken aback because I was in the HR field, which, you know, is dominated by women, and it was uh, I was having problems moving up because I thought it was management material. And you told me, because I told you that I was uh, pursuing my master's and I was going to, you know, finish off my master's in human resources and you told me you know it's dominated by women why don't you finish off your master's but you know switch it up try something different well i was halfway through and they let me change over my master's to logistics and i uh, changed it over to global logistics finished off finished off my master's and i just got accepted to an executive track program for a fortune 500 company been working there for about six months and it's golden top very nice Golden. Very nice. Everything's changed. Your whole perspective is changing now. Definitely, definitely. And originally, and I told you, you know, I thought maybe it was, because, uh, you know, I'm a black man. So I, originally I told you maybe it was, uh, I'm thinking that maybe the race thing had a little bit to do with it. But you know what, Tom? You get that education. You get out there. You push hard. doesn't matter who is who's pushing back. And you keep on going, and you'll get where you need to go. That's exactly That's right. Exactly what you told me, Tom. That's exactly what you said. And it came out the way I told you would. Hell yes. There we go. There thank we go. Dad. Son, thank you, thank you, thank you, son thank you, thank I, you. I am so proud of you. I can't tell you. I, I, I'm not fooling around. I really mean that. I love getting calls like this. Definitely. And to all the all the uh, other listeners out there who are listening to Like Us 101, they think maybe it's a joke or it's not a way of life. Listen, you got to listen to Tom. Tom knows what he's talking about. he tell you the right thing to do. And I'm telling you, everybody else in my executive track program, because they sent me to an executive business college first, Everybody, I turn them on to your program. I had folks in there who hadn't heard of the Tom Likas show before. I was like, what? You haven't heard of Tom Likas? They listened once, and they were hooked, too. So I got about, mm, there's about 18 of us now, and every night we'll play up to a place in poker. They either will stream your show or we'll listen to it live. We got you, Tom. We got you. Love it. Keep in touch and let me know about your progress, Brandon, because I'm really excited for you. 
Oh, it's all good, Tom. We want to we want to have you join our frat too, Joe. Love it. Honorary member. Keep in touch. I I really do want to hear from you. Oh, we will, Tom. We will. All right. Keep doing what you do, Tom. Thank you very very much, Dad. Son, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Look at that. Wow. You'd think you'd have think I you'd have thought I went to college. How do I know about this stuff? I'm giving him advice. Okay. No, I I went to college. I just didn't graduate, and uh, I know what I would have done differently. I'll tell you what. I wouldn't have studied broadcasting. We'll start with that. Just by uh, casual reminder, if you are in college and you're studying broadcasting, that's your major. Get out now. Study. Don't get out of college. Study something else. Just not communications or broadcasting. Biggest waste of time, biggest waste of money. Trust me on this one. Slide over to business administration or something that has value. Do not study broadcasting with some loser who didn't make it in the broadcasting business as your professor. Please. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Now, we have a caller from Montclair, New Jersey, listening to the online stream. This is Dwayne. Dwayne on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, first of all, I just want to start off and say thank you so much. started listening to you about two months ago, man, and it's changed my life. At the time, I'm actually a tra- traveling consultant for my fraternity, and I'm on the road constantly. And I had this nagging girlfriend, just nagging all the time, complaining about everything I'm doing. Always thought I was cheating on her, and I'm like, shut up. I'm not cheating on you every day of my life and if and i started listening to you and it just made me realize why the hell am i putting up with this i don't have to do this i can have a much better life i have a great job right now i don't there's no reason for me to be tied down to some idiot so you really helped me get out of that and i've just been having a great time i have a i mean and before that i was all stressed out and i have an awesome job so there's no reason for me to be stressed out everything else is going great uh things are looking way up now having a blast with my job I'm actually from Nashville, and right now I'm in Montclair, but I'm, every month I'm in a new place. I've been all over the country this year, and I've just realized from listening to you and kind of doing this and being able to sit back and relax a little bit more, you know, I don't ever want to get married. I want to spend the rest of my life never living anywhere for more than four years. I want to move all around the world. And, you know, I'd probably end up with a couple kids in, in a year or so because of her and stressed out and broken. Probably living like some of those guys that you know are pumping your gas. That's right. They'd be you'd be pumping my gas. <laughs> of course, you're in New Jersey. That's where they still pump gas. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, 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 I don't know if our listeners in California know this, but uh, self-service gasoline in New Jersey illegal. You got to have yeah, some yuts come out and pump your gas for you. Yeah, I almost got in trouble for that. And it's and it's what? Here. It's cheaper. And it's cheaper than it is here. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Now, I'm they don't have reformulated like gasoline. That. They just have, you know, continuous smog in New Jersey. But, hey, yeah, you don't have to get out of your car to put gas in the car. <laughs> Not a bad deal so, at all. So, Dwayne, how did the bitch react when you dumped her? Oh, my gosh. She was just a flipping idiot about it. Like, she at first she's, like, just flipping out, screaming at me. And then she's like, well, are you sure this is what you want to do? Are you sure that you don't want to be with me? Maybe it's because we just haven't seen each other in a while. And then right after that, I'm Oh, sorry. boy. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, now, now that you cursed, we had to bleep out the entire phrase. Nobody heard what you just said. Say it without the F word, please. Okay. Uh, so she was, like, I'm, uh, she was like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Uh, maybe it's because we haven't seen each other in a while. And then a second later, she's like, you know what? I never loved you anyway. I freaking hate you. I don't want to be with you. I'm so glad you're doing this. And it's like, okay, if you're that much of a psychopath, I really did myself a favor in this situation. So things are, I mean, things are great for me. And, I mean, I don't really have anybody else to thank but you. I love I that. I appreciate it. I totally love that, Dwayne. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Boy, look at this. I love these calls coming in here. It's outrageous stuff. But it had to end sometime. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Kara of the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. First of all, love you. Love your show. You're great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to tell you that not all comm degrees are obsolete. Um, I graduated from Cal State Fullerton, and they have a really great comm program with public relations and journalism and advertising. 
and um, it's a great program. They have awesome internships that they make you do before you graduate. And um, I think they have broadcasting too, quite honestly, which maybe isn't the best degree to have. But um, uh, I want to tell you how to get a public relations job. First, you need a vagina. Second, you need to be in your mid-20s. Uh -huh. Third, you have to look like you might put out in order to get uh, uh, some coverage for your uh, client, but that you actually never do. Well, that sounds like me. <laughs> that sounds like everybody in public relations. All right, Tom. Because believe me, we, we hear from them all the time. <laughs> all right. Hi, Tom. This is Jennifer so-and-so from Random House. And I have an author you might be interested in, Dr. Richard Goldstein, and he's going to be in your area between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on the 23rd. And we were wondering if you wanted to have an interview with him. <laughs> but he can only do it over the phone. Oh, gosh, Tom. I'll give you my cell number. You know, they're all very flirty. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But until I until I know whether you wear day of the week underwear, I'm not putting any of your clients on the air. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that's how it works. You by the way, by school. the way, I'm not convinced that you need a college degree uh, to become a PR person. Oh, I think you do. Well, based on most the PR people, people I, may, uh, now again, to, to be like a top-notch publicist, that's yeah. a different story. But if you're the usual PR chick, I don't think college is really important. I think looking hot and vaguely available. Sure, actually, that's, that's probably true. If you're just wanting to do in-house PR for someone, you probably don't need a degree. But for the agency setting, if you're really wanting to make a good career out of it, yeah, you need a degree. Right. And they want you to have good writing skills, either with journalism or PR. So. Right. I still think you could major in something else and have that at best as a minor. Well, that's possible. If you yeah, majored that's, in that's business administration, I'm sure any company would have you. Yeah, that's probably a good point. And, uh, by the way, the people who teach broadcasting uh -huh. and frequently broadcast journalism, they're all the losers who didn't make it in the business. That, that sounds pretty accurate. Yeah, I had to take a broadcasting class as an elective. And, Think yeah. of how much money we make and how much money a professor at a university makes. Not much. Not much. So uh, let me ask you a question. Let's take me, for example. Okay. 20 years on the air just in Los Angeles, the largest market in terms of revenue in America. Okay. 20 years experience. Do you think I'd step down from this perch and go teach at Cal State Fullerton? Absolutely not. To make $65,000 a year? No. You'd be crazy. I mean, I'd rather make $65,000 a week, wouldn't you? Of course. Or more. Yeah. Right. So just imagine, I when I went to school, I met all the people who failed uh, being disc jockeys who, who now become broadcasting professors. Yeah. If only everyone in broadcasting made as much as you and Howard, though. I understand that, but here's the point. Uh, if you don't think you can make as much as me or Howard Stern, maybe another career choice might be uh, in the offing for you. Oh, well, yeah, I, I definitely would not make it in broadcasting. I Going and reading liner cards at my FM. Probably doesn't pay much. Probably not. Especially since my FM is, you know that, it's the most aptly named radio station. There's one listener. <laughs> it's his FM. Okay. I think it's her FM, actually. That's it. Huh. I mean, the radio's gotten so specialized that that was a station designed for one person. Wow. I looked at the ratings. That's about how many you're listening. That's crazy, Tom. It's not my FM. It's somebody else's FM. <laughs> I care. There you go. Enough, radi you. enough radio humor for one day. <laughs> take me out of school, Tom. I'll take you out of school, baby. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Aaron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Hey, uh, I had a comment about the Hooters topic that you were talking about the other day. Yeah. And uh, my wife was the same way. Before uh, we had gotten married and had a kid, she was the total same way. We'd go to a strip club, go to a party, you know, where there'd be naked chicks and 
you know, she wouldn't care whatsoever. And then it, after, you know, she popped out a kid, she just had nothing to do with it. Right. We didn't go, we didn't go anywhere. We didn't go out to any parties, no strip clubs. Haven't even gone to Vegas. Right. And it just sucks. Well, uh, again, why did you get married so young? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not really sure. No, no, but, but wait a minute. You were involved in the decision, were you not? No, I was. Yeah, I'm not so when that you was. made the decision, was it that you were A, pussy whip, B, that you had knocked her up, or C, that you have absolutely no game and you figured, now I've got somebody who'll talk nicely to me and have sex with me, well, why keep trying? Exactly. Which one? Exactly. Or was it all three? Uh, it, was, it was all of them. So you knocked her up. And well, you were, no, 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 we got married first. You got married first? Yeah. You were completely pussy whipped. Finally, a girl talked nicely to you. And so you jumped on it. Uh, yeah, well, before before, uh, before we used to just do, you know, whatever. She did her thing, I did mine. And so I thought it was going to stay like that before I'd gotten married. And, you know, after it was... It was what made you think getting married, it would stay the same? Uh, you know, I don't know. We'd been together a while, and it was just... It was going good. It was going the same. Are you a new listener? Um, no, I've been a listener for a while, like six months. Six months. So you were not listening before you got married. So listening now, uh, you know what I say about this, which is that she'll do anything to get you to marry her. Yeah. Oh, sure, honey. I'll have a lap dance. Uh-huh. Sure, honey. Strip clubs every Friday. Mm-hmm. Want to go yeah, to Hooters for some wings? That's great. I'm a cool chick. I love going to Hooters. Right? Yeah, and now it's just totally not. Now she's gained 35 pounds. Yep. And is afraid to be uh, seen in these places. It doesn't want any competition, and now she's going to stop you from doing those things. But you see, that's why the two of you were too immature to get married. Yeah. True. Little did you know. Yep. So, uh, Aaron, I just some good news for you. It only gets worse from here. It's not good news, Tom. Huh? Well... First six months are the best it's ever going to be. You passed that a long time ago. Yeah, we, we already passed that. So, you're 21, and it's all downhill from here. Right. Well... How's that uh, feel? Well, uh, not so good if it keeps going downhill. It, it hasn't been, you know, getting any worse, but it hasn't been getting any better. So, you've only been married two years. Well, that's what I'm saying. It hasn't got... So, you got married at what? 18? 19? 19. And what was the big rush again? Could you tell me what the rush was? Uh, there, w there wasn't a rush. It just seemed like the right person. But clearly, you, what did you know about that? Uh, well, obviously not much, man. Yeah, but that's what I try to tell everybody who's 19 and does that. Well, I wish I would have been listening to you at 19. Well, I wish you had, too. But uh, I'm, more, I'm not really doing this to slap you around as much as I'm doing it for the other moronic 19-year-olds who want to make the same mistake you made. I want them to know how miserable you are, how it shows no signs of getting any better, it'll probably only get worse, and how at some point you're probably going to finally have to pull the plug on this. And you know yeah. that's true. Yeah. So my advice to you, which you didn't ask for, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, don't have any more kids. I'm not planning on it, Tom. What about your wife? I'll bet she is. No, she does, she actually doesn't want any more either. So I got like you on that part. Maybe she doesn't want to be married anymore either. Uh, maybe not, but if you're lucky, yeah, yeah, maybe. Just remember, every money. two days you stay is another day of alimony. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been hearing lately. So it's not too late to uh, turn it around, fix the mistake. You're only 21. By the way, Aaron, what college did you go to? Uh, Animal Valley College. A community college? Yeah. 13th grade? Yep. You went to, I want to spend the day effing my wife, university. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, close. Right. Too busy to be bothered studying university. Yeah. Right. Well, also, also uh, I didn't always have the best of grades, so I couldn't, you know, afford, like, a university. Yeah, but you see, that's because you were busy with a girlfriend and then a wife. True. And how much does that cost you? Uh, quite a bit. Right. 
And it's going to cost you in the future. Because when you're putting oil in my car, that doesn't pay much. Right. What do you do for a living? Uh, I drive an ambulance. I drive an ambulance. Yeah, and uh, studying to be a nurse. You're studying to be a nurse? Yep. At, at what, a technical trade school or something? No, 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 no. At college. A community college. Right. Right. You know, had you gone to school instead of getting married, you could have been a doctor. True. And made real money. Uh, they make good money. High, good money. What's that? High salary, good money. Yeah, that's true. How much do you make? Um, about forty, forty-five thousand a year. Ooh, we. Yeah. So, uh, where do you live? Like Arlita, Pacoima. Uh, North Hollywood. North Hollywood. Same difference. Yep. You know the city uh, slogan there in North Hollywood. Same as Culver City. It's not just for taggers anymore. Yeah. Uh, that's why. I... Do you have bars on your windows? No, I don't. Do your neighbors? Uh, no, they don't. Really? Really. So you live in the good part of North Hollywood? Yeah. It's checking. Yep. Very nice. You could have been a contender, Aaron. Yep, could have been. I wish I would have listened to you earlier, Tom. Well, so do I, believe me. Tom, 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 like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. Back in high school, you said I was a girlfriend. First day I heard you, dumped the bitch the next day. So. I love that. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show, coming to you from Hollywood. About 805, 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. It's Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. I just, uh, I just had a quick question. Um, a lot of these guys I know make a lot of bad decisions, as I have in my life, with getting married so young and having a kid but i think we're a little harsh on them i think we should take it easy as far as uh save all the bad comments for the females out there uh no i i think that uh you need someone to be tough on you if someone was tough on you you wouldn't be where you're at now well i mean i'm not in such a bad position in the sense where i'm crying every night or what do you do for a living daniel i am a mechanic very good I want you to take a look at my brakes. <laughs> oh, man. Drive it in the hills. I need to have those brake shoes replaced now and then. Excuse me? I'm sorry? I said drive it in the Hollywood hills. I need to have those brake shoes replaced now and then. <laughs> and so, check my uh, fluids, too. I understand that. But, uh... So you think by being hard on these guys after the mistake, it's going to change the ones they've already made? No, it's going to change the guys who are thinking of doing the same stupid things they did. So you can't clarify that when you knock on these guys? I don't have to clarify it. Should I assume they're as dumb as they sound? <laughs> I understand that, too, but we're all one of a kind in a sense. All just as stupid? No, not all of us are just as stupid, but, I mean, we're all men. We all have a a pair down there, and I think I just take care of each other in the sense where if we make a mistake... If you're a real man, you you should buck up and take it. Oh, I understand that. See, I can tell... I mean, would you me. tell, if you were in the Marines, would you tell that to a drill sergeant? I would. First of all, I wouldn't do anything of that stupidity to me. I'm just saying. The point is, somebody has got to tell you guys how to keep in line. Obviously, your fathers have failed. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you that right now. My father did fail because he bailed. Well, <laughs> and again, I'm sure your mother told you what a jerk he was. No, no, definitely. My mom has never badmouthed my dad, not once. And that I put on my firstborn. Wow. Never. Never. Mm -hmm. And you did what now? You went and got married? Yeah, I got married. I was uh, 20 years old when I got married. I... uh 
You can say I was in love, but well, love I, I could uh, I could say it, but uh, you know, what I really could say is that you were immature. Yes, and you were going to Bud Green University. <laughs> What I will say, Tom, what I learned is love don't pay the bills. And that's pretty much... But, yeah, here's another thing, though. Love may not pay the bills, but you're going to be paying the bills until you're dead because yep. of what you did. But you know you know what it is, though, is I feel that I need to be a man and be there for my son regardless of... You can what... be there for your son without marrying his mother and paying her expenses. Well, we were married first. We got married. You don't have to be married, is what I'm trying to tell you. I don't really make a great amount of change, and that's all I need is, I heard cheaper to keep her. That's a song. That's not reality. Really? Really. Okay. Haven't you read the statistic, and it's quoted all the time, that after a divorce, a man's standard of living rises... And a woman's standard of living deteriorates. Haven't you read that? No, sir, but I get Might try opening the newspaper now and then. I, no, no, I definitely believe you because me and my wife have split up for months. So you believe that? Yes, of course I do. Well, if it was cheaper to keep her, why would your standard of living go up and hers go down? And the answer is because you're not there to pay her bills anymore. Suddenly, the money you were spending on her bills is now being spent on you. True. So, so cheaper to keep her is a lie. I guess so. I guess you're right. It rhymes, and it makes for a great song title. <laughs> but the reality is, it's cheaper to dump her. And and what about the situation with my son? How do I... I mean, I don't see how I can you handle that by being away. Continue to live in the same area code. Continue to spend time with him aggressively uh, get all the time with him you can. When you have a place, make sure he has his own room. So when he comes, he feels like it's home. And uh, let him know nothing's going to change between you and him. I just see what worries me, Tom, honestly, is I know what, I know it is possible not to love your father. See, a lot of people live in this blind and say, oh, you have to love your parents. You have no. Because I feel nothing for my father. I don't feel hatred, but I don't feel love. So my biggest thing is I know it's possible not to love your father. So that's what I'm trying to, like, keep from happening. But unlike your father who just disappeared, you're not going to disappear. You're just not going to be paying the mother of your child's expenses. True. Very true. True. I mean... The reason why I even called in the first place because the how badly you were banging on this guy, and uh, I just I guess back to the point why I called is I think we could take a little bit easier on us. People I don't think I don't I think the problem is that you've been raised by your mommy, and uh, your dad wasn't around, and she was easy on you, and that's why you ended up marrying your girlfriend. Easy on me. What, what's your? Uh... If if you had a dad there, you'd have gone to college. He'd have kicked your ass. I don't believe that. I don't believe well, that because I know more than enough people who grew up with their fathers who are doing. I know I'm not doing great, but they're doing a lot worse than me. Yeah, but you were just lazy, and uh, you wanted to bone your girlfriend rather than go to school. I actually uh, left school. Before I had my girlfriend. Well, then you wanted to bone a girlfriend. She actually took my virginity, to be honest with you. You didn't want to go to school because you were lazy. Yep, that I believe. Yes, yeah. I totally agree with you on well, that. I mean, you were either lazy or stupid. Which is it? Uh, a little bit of both, because I, as far as... Lazy, not so much, but it was more stupidity, I guess you can say. And I don't just mean stupid about not going to school. I mean, don't have the smarts to go to college, not smart enough. Well, see, the thing is, is I was never, I'm not going to sit here and play this pity card, but I was never. Why would anybody pity you, for God's sake? The Tom Likas Show.